Welcome to Wellness Talk, brought to you by The Counterpart Show. Wellness Talk, as always, is a show that goes over the latest in health and healing, nutrition, and supplements. We take the mystery out of supplements, and we take the mystery out of health. Hope you guys are doing great, and you've had a fantastic week. As always, I'm George Batista, your host and your wellness advocate. So make sure you go to georgebatista.com to check out all the resources and all the articles that we go over. There's hundreds of articles on there now. So literally, you can go in and just type the information look for the topic that you're looking for and you definitely find an article on it. And by the way, it's being updated every day and pretty much every week. So it's becoming one of the great online resources for health education. All right. So uh, let's go over our, our topics for this week. Uh, this week, we're going to be talking about how to unfriend sugar in five easy steps. And this is our wellness resources article of the week. And if you think about it, sugar is just one of the big addictions in society, right? Um, you know, not only with all the other addictions that are out there, obviously there are addictions that are worse than sugar, but sugar is a big one. I know a lot of people who are addicted to it. I actually was addicted to it, addicted to it when I was younger. And um, it was, it was very, very difficult to wean myself off of sugar, or at least do what I can to wean myself off of it. So we're going to talk about, you know, what are the, what are the advantages of weaning yourself off of sugar, how you can do it in a very easy, uncomplicated way, because people tend to make things very uncomplicated. And I think you'll find this very, very interesting, whether you yourself have a sugar addiction or you know someone that has a sugar addiction, I think it's going to be very informative uh, for you guys. Then we're going to talk about alpha linoleic acid, or what's also known as ALA. And this is the plant-based form of omega-3s. And, you know, people think of omega-3s, you know, mostly from fish or from maybe taking uh, omega-3 soft gels, EPA and DHA. But uh, alpha linoleic acid is also a very important form of omega-3s. But there's some new research on it. And this is uh, coming from the journal Advance in Nutrition. This is out from February 2022, and they talk about how ALA affects not only cognitive health, but heart health. So again, very, very interesting stuff, brand new science on this, and I think you will find it of interest. Then we're going to talk about, and our featured article this week is going to be on magnesium glycinate, benefits, sleep, anxiety, PMS, and more. And this is... Um, I think this is very important because magnesium is one of the biggest deficiencies we have right now in society, right? Besides vitamin D and magnesium is so important in your diet and most people are not getting in the diet. So we're going to talk about exactly what magnesium glycinate is, why it's important and why you should be taking it if you feel that you are magnesium deficient and what it does and how it works and what are the different forms of magnesium. And how do they differ from magnesium glycinate? So we're going to talk about all that because, again, this is very, very important because, again, every, pretty much everybody who's listening to this right now is probably have some form of magnesium deficiency. So just keep that in mind. But I think it's just bears repeating. I've talked about magnesium before, but it's just too important to ignore. Now, out of that, we're also going to have our nutrient spotlight for the week. We're going to talk about Wellness Resources Relax Mag. Now, Relax Mag, again, is a is one of the premier supplements by Wellness Resources. And they, it's it's one of the best supplements if you want to deal with just um, anxiety and uh, sleep and um, just relaxing yourself in general. Just Relax Mag is one of the best supplements to do that with because it's got all the ingredients that work together to help you with anxiety and relaxation and sleep. So we're going to talk about what's in it and uh, how it works. So it's very important. And then finally, I'm going to talk a little bit about your why. Why do you want to be healthy? The questions that you need to be asking yourself if you want to get healthy, right? Because, you know, everybody talks about the why when it comes to being successful. Well, you can also be successful in health. That's also very important, right? And so I think that having a good why is going to be able to push you through those times where you will, where you would normally not get through if you're trying to get healthy and maybe you would relapse or that type of thing. So having a why is very important. I've talked about it before on this podcast, but I think it bears repeating because people just don't understand why having a why is so important. So um, that's what we have on tap. Those are our discussions for this week. So let's get started. First, 
from Wellness Resources. This is how to unfriend sugar in five easy steps. Again, this is from a guy who used to be addicted to sugar when he was young. So this is uh, very near and dear to my heart. So let's just talk about some of the facts. And again, you know, I, you guys know I like to start off with just some ba basic facts for you guys, just so you kind of get some context in it. So the CDC recommends that added sugar amount uh, amount to no more than 10% of your diet. 10%. Most people don't even have that, right? As a matter of fact, they say that the average person, the average person eats 150 pounds of sugar a year. Think about that. That's a whole person in body weight in sugar per year. That's insane. Okay. So again, CDC recommends no more than 10%. Now that means if you consume 2000 calories a day, you should not have more than 200, uh, 200, um, calories of sugar in the diet. Now, you know, sugary foods generally contain fewer nutrients and obviously, if you're over, overdoing it, this is where you lead to problems because then you end up with low energy, you end up with weight gain, you end up with tooth decay, all the way up to cancer and heart disease, or at least increased risk for those things. So this is why you need to lessen the amount of sugar. I'm not saying you don't have to eliminate it entirely, but do whatever you can to lessen the amount of sugar that you intake every single day, right? So, so you know, choose to forego high the first thing is basically start your day off right. So, you know, try to avoid the the sugary breakfast, right? The breakfast cereals that contain tons of sugar, you know, the, the waffles, the pancakes, the bagels, you know, those types of things. What you want to do is you want to opt in for high protein. Okay. So, um, because remember having a high protein breakfast actually raises your metabolic rate by 30%. It actually helps your liver metabolism work much better and boost your energy. And it also helps you to feel full and also helps with cravings, especially uh, moving later into the day. And it actually helps with energy crashes as well. Okay. So my suggestion would be start your day off with protein, not the sugary breakfast. So protein can be eggs. Um, I eat eggs in the morning. They're great. Um, also it could be, uh, a, a, um, a, a shake, a protein shake. Okay. Wellness resources has a fantastic protein shake called the daily protein plus, and you can mix that with some, whether it's almond milk, or if you're using organic 2% milk or something like that, or coconut milk, rice milk, whatever milk you choose. Obviously I don't, I don't like the regular cow's milk. I haven't had cow's milk since I'm a kid, but you know, whatever it is that you use, I would suggest, you know, maybe putting in the wellness resources protein in there because it's a great way to start off, a great way to lessen your cravings throughout the day and to keep you full when you're getting to your lunch period. So that's that's my suggestion for breakfast. Now, uh, next thing you want to do is you want to improve your gut health. Okay, so one of the things that that is affected by high sugar is a gut imbalance. Okay, you. The more sugar you eat, if your gut is in is not in balance, let's say you you've got an overgrowth of bacteria, that type of thing in your gut, you have to remember that the bad bacteria in your gut feeds on all the sugar that you eat. Okay, so again, you don't want to end up fermenting because that's what ends up happening when you're eating all this sugar. You may start to get the bloating and and the uh, you know the gas and the bloating and the stomach aches and those types of things, and that's a sign where you actually may have an imbalance, whether, whether it's candida albicans or can, you know, candidiasis or whatever it is. So you, you know, these are things that you want to make sure that you're looking out for. Okay. So things like high fiber foods can help. Okay. Obviously the vegetables and the berries, avocados, apples, beans, lentils, you know, beets, all these types of things with high fiber can actually help you when it comes to lessening your sugar intake or, you know, and, um, making sure your blood sugar is in check. And by the way, keep in mind that your blood sugar is also affected by the amount of fiber that you take in at that time. So the more fiber you take in with your meal, the less your blood sugar is going to spike. Just keep that as a tip. Okay. It's very, very important. Okay. Here's the next thing. Avoid snacking after dinner and between meals. This is one of the worst things. This is one of the big offenders. This is what, you know, people end up having a problem with. People constantly have to snack between meals. And my, 
I've, I've told you guys before, I have three meals a day, no snacks. If I'm going to have a snack, I have it with my meal. In other words, right after I've eaten, but I don't have it two or three hours be, you know, after I've, you know, after I've eaten or before my next meal. Very, very important. Okay. So you can use nutritional supplements also to help you with that. Uh, there is a supplement called Lepti Slim by Wellness Resources. And it's, it's a great supplement helps with, again, with sugar, uh, sugar cravings. It contains uh, bitter herbs and pancreas supporting nutrients to help you deal with any kind of uh, cravings and just blood sugar issues or anything like that, especially late at night, because eating at night is one of the worst things you can do. Another thing you want to do is eat healthy fats. Okay. So try to eat, you know, as, as many healthy fats as possible with each meal, if you can, maybe adding some olive oil to your salads, add some avocado, add some nuts. That's, that's very good. Those are very healthy fats. Um, you could also add uh, DHA. Okay. Uh, there is a, there is a uh, supplement by wellness resources called Lepti Slim, which is a high quality DHA. And um, you can add, add that in as well if you want to look at the supplement route. But it's very, very important. Adding high fats, is, again, is one of the things that helps with overall cravings and it helps just keeping your system in check. So I would definitely do that. And by the way, the, uh, the leptinol supplement by Wellness Resources, it contains marine, marine lipid oil. And it, it contains about 500 milligrams of DHA along with 100 milligrams of EPA, which are the essential nutrients that are in fish oils and, uh, and fish in general. Okay. And it also contains borage oil at 110 milligrams. So just something to keep in mind. Next tip, drink plenty of water. Now, one of the things that people don't realize is that thirst sometimes can be confused with sugar cravings. Okay. Sometimes it's just a matter of that your body needs hydration. And if you are dehydrated, you can actually end up with more cravings for sugar. Okay. So one of the tips is reach for, you know, water instead of, you know, try it, try to make sure that you hydrate yourself as much as you can and see if that affects your craving for sugar that day. You could even add a squeeze of lemon in it. That's one of the big things as well. But sometimes it could be that you're actually thirsty and that's why you're craving sugar. Okay. So those are just some quick tips on how to uh, help yourself when it comes to sugar. You know, obviously there's a lot of other, you know, there's, there are other things you can do, but these are very simple steps you can take to try to, again, unfriend sugar uh, as, as much as you can. You know, you, you don't want to overdo anything but you don't want to get to the point where you're eating 150 pounds of sugar every year. So it's just something to think about if you are, again, if you're dealing with the sugar cravings like I did when I was younger and, or if you know somebody who's dealing with it. Okay. Next, we're going to talk about alpha, alpha linoleic acid or ALA plant-based omega-3 supports heart and cognition. And this is by Joe Boland. So um, let's talk about ALA and exactly what it is first. So uh, alpha, uh, alpha linoleic acid is basically the plant-based form of omega-3. And typically you would get, you know, you would get it in things like walnuts and flax seeds. Those are probably contain the highest amounts of ALA, but um, it's a very good source of omega-3s. Now, the American Heart Association reports that nearly half of Americans have heart disease. Half. Think about that. Half of Americans have heart disease. And according to the CDC, it continues to be the number one killer in the United States. Okay. So it's just something to think about when it comes to heart health in general. Now, this was again out of the journal Advance in Nutrition, and they found evidence that a plant-based omega-3 supplement, uh, heart health, uh, supports heart health, sorry. And uh, as an added bonus, this type of omega-3 also supports cognitive health. Now, um, this is what they did. This was, this was an analysis examined several different bodies of research on ALA. It was um, because it's a vegetable-based uh, omega-3 fatty acid. The examination spanned the globe, including studies and researchers from the Fatty Acid Research Institute of South Dakota, Penn State, University Department of uh, Nutritional uh, Services, and several organizations in Spain. And the researchers looked at meta-analysis, observational studies, and randomized control trials. So 
those of you who know meta-analysis is when they take a whole bunch of studies and they kind of pull them together and kind of get an average of everything that has come out of those studies. And again, same thing, randomized control trials and observational studies. So pretty much these are all the big studies, right? Because randomized control trials are pretty much the gold standard of studies. So here's what they found. Increasing dietary ALA is linked with a 10% lower risk of heart disease and a 20% lower risk of fatal coronary heart disease. And they also found that dietary ALA can reduce cholesterol, triglycerides, and blood pressure. They found that epidemi epidemiological studies and trials showed that ALA's anti-inflammatory effects and research points to ALA helping decrease diabetes risk as well, okay? So the role of ALA in cognition is in the early stages, but also shows promising evidence of counteract, counteracting cognitive impairment. So this is big. Now, the reason why this is big is because there's been a lot of studies in the past about ALA. And they have found that, so when you take in ALA or when you take in an omega-3, specifically like ALA, it has to be converted in your body. There's a conversion process that happens. And it converts over to uh, EPA and DHA, which are the most essential components in as far as um, omega-3s are concerned, right? EPA deals with inflammation. It helps to, helps to um, uh, promote the synthesis of prostaglandins, which are anti-inflammatory in your body. And DHA actually helps to, um, it, it actually goes through the blood, the blood brain barrier and actually helps your brain. Okay. So DHA and EP are extremely important. But what they have found in the past is that only a small percentage of ALA is actually has been converted in the human body. And not as much as, let's say, if you're actually taking you know, omega-3s when it comes to like a gel caps or something like that, that contain higher amounts of just the, a, just the uh, EPA and DHA. So you do have to take in a lot more of the ALA, but it does not mean that ALA is not important. ALA is important. So I would add it. So let's say, for example, if you are, if you are taking DHA and EPA in your diet already or through supplementation, why not add some ALA as well, right? You can take some of the ALA and you could sprinkle it on whatever it is you're, you're eating. Or let's say you are uh, you have a smoothie, you can put some of it in the smoothie and blend it up. But ALA can be important, but and obviously in these studies, it has shown some benefits. So either way, omega-3s are extremely important. They are an essential fatty acid. So that means that the body cannot make it. That means you need to in, uh, take it in through ingestion, right? And you need to make sure that you are taking it in on a regular basis because it's very important. So obviously if you eat fatty fish, that's great. And you, you, you probably be, you know, getting a lot of your omegas through there, but if you supplement as well, that's just boosting it a little, you know, just kind of getting a little bit of boost in it. But again, good science on ALA. So those of you who do take your flaxseed or your walnuts, and by the way, you can get it from Brazil nuts as well, pine nuts, um, sunflower seeds, you know, those are big sources of ALA. So just so you guys know, so if you're reading any of that stuff, you're definitely getting some ALA. So that's good. So uh, just keep those things in mind. Next, we're going to talk about magnesium glycinate. And this is my favorite form of magnesium. And it's the most important form of magnesium that I feel. So Let's just talk about magnesium in general and why it's so important to have magnesium first and what it does, right? So magnesium deficiency affects, it's up to, I, they would say maybe 70 to 70 to 90% of the population is deficient in magnesium, 70 to 90%. That means pretty much nine out of 10 people who are listening to this are deficient in magnesium, right? So think about it. So now, Let's talk about magnesium and what it is. Magnesium is the fourth most abundant mineral in the human body behind potassium, calcium, and sodium, okay? Now, but mag why magnesium is important? Because it's responsible for over 400 enzyme processes in your body. So if you do not have enough magnesium, you've got enzyme processes that are not working properly. It's just that simple. You have to have enough magnesium. It's that important. So Magnesium glycinate, what it is, it's a form of magnesium that is added to an amino acid called glycine. And glycine is an amino acid that actually 
has been known to have calming qualities. Now, why is this important? Because when you're taking in magnesium, uh, magnesium glycinate specifically, it's since it's bound to the glycine, glycine is very, very absorbable by the human body because it's an amino acid. Body takes it in right away. Well, it takes it in, but also takes magnesium with it. And this is key. This is the key because it becomes very absorbable when you do it this way. Okay. So why should you should, should you choose this? Uh, the National Institutes of Health definition of magnesium is an abundant mineral in the body that is naturally present in many foods, added to other food products, and available as a dietary supplement and, uh, and present in some medicines, okay? But again, it's an essential mineral and it's an electrolyte. Now, so those with anxiety, diabetes, uh, heart disease, um, you know, uh, issues and pain, that type of thing, definitely need to, you know, if you if you feel that you are magnesium deficient or you have the signs of magnesium deficiency, magnesium glycinate is one of the best things to take in, okay? It's one of the most effective ways you can take in magnesium, just so you know. Now, it's basically what it's called, it's chelated. It's a chelated form of magnesium, so that's why it's very absorbable. So what does magnesium do in the body? Magnesium is responsible for blood pressure regulation. It's responsible for protein synthesis, energy production, digestive processes, heart rhythms. Okay, heart, that's a big one. Heart rhythms, right? Everybody's dealing with all kinds of heart rhythm issues these days, okay? It's responsible for, um, for neurotransmitter functions, nerve health. Nerve health is another big one. A balance of nitric oxide in the body. It also helps with just uh, with blood sugar issues, right? It actually helps to make the cells able to handle insulin and more susceptible and more uh, be able to take in insulin a lot more easily. Magnesium does all these things. I mean, way more stuff than magnesium does. That's just, just some of the things that that it does. So, but let's talk about just uh, just the, the basic common things that uh, magnesium glycinate helps with, okay? So um, magnesium glycinate, number one, helps to reverse magnesium deficiency, okay? That's number one. And it also helps to keep things in balance with sodium, potassium, and calcium because they all have to be in balance because remember, they are all electrolytes, okay? Now, experts believe that one of the reasons magnesium supplements are so beneficial is because they counterbalance high levels of calcium. And by the way, another thing that you have to realize that because there is a balance of sodium and magnesium and your body, you know, our bodies try to keep it in balance as much as possible. If you are a salt sensitive person, you, um, and let's say you get swelling, right? Some people get swelling in the ankles, swelling in the legs, swelling in the feet, because maybe they have too much sodium. They're dealing with an imbalance of sodium. A lot of time that is because you are either excreting magnesium way too much. You just don't have enough magnesium. Because again, once you have enough magnesium in your body, then it starts to become a balance with all the other minerals in there, specifically with sodium and potassium, okay? So there has to be a balance in there. So my suggestion for those folks, increase some of your magnesium. And also, if you're on medications, magnesium gets taken out very, very easily by blood pressure, blood pressure medications, you know, all types of medications. Obviously, if you have to be on those medications, you have to do what you have to do, but Keep in mind that those are magnesium, th those medications strip out the magnesium pretty efficiently. So again, just something you want to think about. Now, number two, magnesium glycinate can help you improve sleep quality. Studies have found that magnesium supplements can help promote muscle relaxation, like I was talking about, decreases leg cramps, muscle cramps, can reduce tension and anxiety, and fight pain. So um, you know, very, very important. So it also helps to decrease daytime fatigue, enhance focus and learning and uh, retention and memory. So a lot of things that, you know, this, this form of magnesium could do. Matter of fact, there was a 2012 double blind randomized control trial that, that had 46 elderly adults struggling with insomnia. They gave them magnesium supplements, 500 milligrams, by the way, and they found that they were able, they were able to sleep more effectively and they had their concentrations of renin and melatonin went up significantly. So look at that. Number three, it helps to reduce anxiety and depression. We've talked about that. It acts on 
It acts on the nerves, okay? It helps, again, decrease stress and anxiety, restlessness, depression, cravings, and more, okay? And number four, it helps to, and this is a big one, helps may help to treat migraines and headaches. Why? So a lot of people with migraines and just migraine headaches in general or just regular headaches then sometimes can be magnesium deficient because magnesium is suspected to play a role in the pathogenesis of migraine headaches for several reasons. Deficiency, deficiency can increase muscle tension and a lot of headaches come from the neck where you get a lot of tension, especially if you have neck problems or back problems. It helps to enhance the perception of anxiety or depression, alter neurotransmitter release and interfere with blood pressure and all, um, alter aggregation of blood platelets. So again, magnesium interacting with so many things in the human body. Number five, it's beneficial for blood pressure. Magnesium works with calcium, okay, to uh, help balance the, again, the levels in your blood and make sure that your blood, your, your blood pressure stays in check, you know, and because of that, helps with just general hypertension, cardiomyopathy, cardiac arrhythmia, atherosclerosis, all different types of things like that. Um, because without magnesium, it actually increases your risk of those types of things. Okay. So it can, it can really help to support all those types of things. So, um, number six, it can help to decrease PMS symptoms. And it's been shown in many, many studies, by the way, to help to uh, release uh, the release of prostaglandins, which also EPA and DHA do actually specifically EPA does. And that helps to trigger, you know, which can, you know, there, now there are, there are different types of prostaglandins. There are good prostaglandins, then there are bad prostaglandins. So magnesium glycinate actually helps to decrease the bad prostaglandins that are, that are triggered in your body, which actually trigger inflammation, which eventually lead to cramps and pain in women, right? It was a, a double blind placebo controlled trial. <clears throat> they had women who were taking 250 milligrams of magnesium plus 40 milligrams of vitamin B6. And they found that uh, it actually reduced the severity of PMS symptoms. And um, from the vitamin B6, it also helped just reg with regulation of their menstrual cycles as well, okay? Very, very important stuff. So there are other forms of magnesium. Uh, some of the forms are magnesium citrate and magnesium oxide. Now, magnesium citrate is a magnesium which is bound to citric acid. Now, that is not really a well-absorbed magnesium, but the reason why that form of magnesium can be effective is because one of the side effects of that magnesium is it actually gives you a laxative effect. So if you are dealing with any kind of constipation, you know, stuff like that, magnesium citrate actually can help. Magnesium oxide also can help with that as well. <clears throat> but again, um, there it's, 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 a, it's a side effect of that, right? Taking that magnesium, those are those side effects, but it's not going to be the right form of magnesium to actually bring up the amount of magnesium in your blood that you need, Okay. So just keep those in mind. That's why magnesium glycinate is so effective. Now, um, what are the guidelines as far as how much magnesium people need? So typically, and this is just this is just basic, you know, off of the you know our general health organizations. Infants six months, uh, roughly about thirty milligrams. Seven to twelve, seventy-five milligrams. You know, uh, kids nine to thirteen, two hundred and forty milligrams. Uh, um, adults 31 years or older, 420 milligrams and 320 milligrams, usually for women and 420 for men, pregnant women, 350 to 360 milligrams and women who are breastfeeding 310 to 320 milligrams. So, and because of that, I also want to talk a little bit about um, our nutrient spotlight this week, which was, which will be Relax Mag, and that's again from Wellness Resources. Now, Relax Mag is a great, great supplement for those of you dealing with anxiety or dealing with, you know, just, you know, sleep problems or just need to relax in general. We all do if you really think about it, right? Relax Mag contains magnesium glycinate, which is very, very important. Okay. It also contains vitamin C. It contains citric acid. It, it contains malic acid. 
and succinic acid. So a lot of different things, but all these things work together, okay? Because you have to remember that one of the things that magnesium does, it's also, it's required in the final steps of energy production called ATP in your body. So a lack of magnesium is also going to be responsible for, or can be responsible for a lack of energy, right? So, but, uh, you know, so wellness resources uses these uh, chelated form of magnesium because it, again, it works so well to bring up the magnesium in your body and to help to promote the normal function of the magnesium pump in your body. So, uh, magnesium glycinate, very, very good. So if you guys are interested, check out wellness resources and relax mag. If you are looking for a great supplement to uh, bring up your magnesium and at the same time, and by the way, it's non-drowsy, you know, you can take it during the day to help if you're dealing with excess stress, whether you're at work or anything like that. But I would definitely check out relax mag, go to myvitaminresource.com or just check it out down below in the description below. Check out relax mag. I think you will enjoy that supplement very, very much. Okay. And finally, I want to talk about your why. Um, and this, I think, is very, very important. Why um, Why do you want to be healthy? Those of you who are listening to the show, obviously you're listening, and you know, those of you who are regular listeners to the show, you're listening to the show because you may, you know, you may get something out of it, right? You're getting some, val- maybe some valuable information, some health tips. Maybe you're looking to get healthier. Maybe you just started on your path, or maybe you've been on your path for a long period of time. But, you know, either way, there is a why there. Why do you want to get healthy? And the funny thing is that, you know, I've, I've coached many, many, many people. And one of the first things I've asked them is, why is it that you want to get healthy? What's the reason why you want to get healthy? And sometimes they look at me with this blank stare because I don't think they've ever thought about it. People always tell them, yeah, I need, you, know, you need to get healthy. You need to eat better. You need to stop smoking. You need to stop drinking. You need to stop, you know, taking in soda or whatever it is. And they go, yeah, 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 yeah. But they don't really have that why. I can tell you my why. And those of you who listen to this show kind of know it, but you guys know that I grew up a kind of a sickly kid with a lot of different ailments. So number one, my biggest why right there is I don't want to go through that ever again. I don't want to live my life sickly in pain. I don't want to have all these different things that I'm dealing with that I have to take medication for. I don't want to do that. Uh, My second thing, I have a lot of whys, by the way, but my second thing is that, you know, my daughter who who's, you know, she's a teenager right now, but eventually at some point she may want to have children. And if she has children, I'll be a grandpa. I want to make sure I can hang out with those kids. I can play ball with those kids. I can pick up those kids. I don't have to worry about being in a wheelchair. I don't have to worry about being walking around with a cane. I don't have to worry about, you know, just struggling just to get off the couch. There's so many people who just struggle just to get off the couch because they are in so much pain. So those are my whys. And then obviously I want to live as long as I can on this planet because Again, we're all, we all have an expiration date, right? We're all moving on to the next plane of existence, whatever that is. So, um, but while I'm here, I want to maximize my body and I want to maximize my mind. And I want to make sure that I'm doing it to the best possible uh, ability that I can. And by the way, you know, when you do that, your kids see this as well. When you're living a healthy lifestyle, you don't realize, remember, kids don't do what you say. They do what you do, right? Right. So if you are living a healthy lifestyle and you are little by little showing them that this is the right way to go, you have a better shot at having them follow in your footsteps. So keep those things in mind. Now, but what is your why? Why is it that you want to get healthy? Why is it that you want to? Your why could be that you left the doctor's office not long ago and that you were dealing with some kind of issue, right? The doctor says you have high blood pressure, high blood sugar, you have arthritis, you have some, you know, maybe you have something worse than that. So maybe that is your why. And that, that tends to be a lot of people's why that I've noticed. Obviously, you know, when they're, when, when they don't feel anything, they're fine. And they're not worried about they're drinking, smoking, doing whatever it is. As soon as they go to the doctor and all of a sudden there's something really, really wrong, then they change everything. Then they run to the nutritionist, right? And then, okay, I need to get healthy. Well, but meanwhile, the 30 years you were doing that before, well, you you didn't care about it, right? But that can become the why. So I would say write down what your why is. 
Why is it that you want it? That, that why has to really be strong. Look to the future. If you have grandkids or if you or if your kids are having kids or if you're just starting and you're having kids, think about the future and say, when my child hopefully has grand, you know, has kids one day, which will be my grandkids, I want to be able to hang out with them. And and, you know, grandparents tend to have a second life, right, when they when they have grandkids. Right. So make it your second life. Make it make it that you, you're able to do the things that with those grandkids that you couldn't do with your children because maybe you were working too much. Maybe maybe, you know, there was just too much going on. Maybe there was too much stress. Maybe there was too much drama, whatever the case may be. Sometimes grandparents have a second shot. So um, that could be your why. Whatever it is, it doesn't matter. But my suggestion would be on your health journey, write down your why and keep it with you. That's the reason why I want to get healthy. Because when you slip up, when you're eating that sugar, when you're not taking in enough of the stuff that you need, enough of the nutrients that you need, when you're want to grab that cigarette, when you want to drink that soda, when whatever it is, not exercise, look at that why and say, this is why I'm doing this. This is why I need to do this and keep myself healthy because I have, you know, I'm going to have kids. I may have kids. I have grandkids. I want to be around for them as long as I can. I want to be around with my family as long as I can. I don't want to be a burden to my kids. I don't want my kids to have to wheel me around in a wheelchair. I don't want my kids to have to constantly you know, take me to doctor's appointments and lift me out of the chair and those types of things. So again, everybody's circumstances are different. And obviously there's no 100% effective anything. There just isn't. That's just life. But put the odds in your favor. And one of the things you can do is know your why. That is putting the odds in your favor. Know why you are doing this. And I think if you answer those questions, why am I doing this? What am I looking to achieve with this? And how can I, how can I do this regularly, you know, <clears throat> every week, every month, every year, whatever it is? Because remember, it's that little percentage growth that happens every single day, week, month, or year. You're not going to notice it that week, but you will definitely notice it a year later if you are consistent. Okay. So look at your why, be consistent make healthy choices. And I guarantee you, you will, again, put the odds in your favor, less likely to have to deal with any of those things. So that's just my little soapbox for this week, but uh, just something to think about, okay? Uh, when you're moving you know, along through life and wanting to go through this health journey, all right? So I want to thank everyone for tuning into this. Hope you guys got some great tips out of this. Again, go to georgebatista.com. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe wherever you're listening to this. Also, check out the Connor Part Show Tuesday nights, 8 p.m. Uh, Eastern time. We've got some great guests coming up. Those of you who are X-Files fans, by the way, we have a gentleman that was on the X-Files. You may be interested in that coming up this Tuesday. So everybody have a fantastic and healthy week. Take care of yourselves and each other. And as always, take control of your health. Bye-bye now.